You ready to go do chores? Yeah. These mud boots are really good. You like those mud boots? Yeah, they, they don't they make me slip so much. Yeah. Sunrise is pretty. We have like the first day and so it feels like two or three weeks if the wind's not blowing 50 miles an hour. Oh guys, show me your routine. But here's a little trick. I think Kate first. So this hay's not the great hay. You usually get her a little extra. Yeah. But if it's a good flake, she just gets one. So this is Kate. She's on a diet? Yeah. How come? Because she goes on the round bale and eats lots and lots. And then she gets really fat. Mm. <laughs> need a little bit bigger piece because it's three of them. Check on their water, give them more. I usually put it up that high so it gives me time to get that and dump it. Yeah. Dodo happen. What are you doing, buddy? We need to put chicken food in the container in the chicken coop because those are like empty. Oh, okay. Oh, What is this, Bridget? Grain. Are you for the chicken? Yeah, it's kind of like seed. Go. Oh, Pretty much feels like we're always going to the feed store and either getting cat food or something for some critter. So what's this for? This is wheat feed for my steer burger. Okay. Your steer named burger. put his grain you put it in there put it in here and then the dogs don't get to it yeah because if i put it down here he'll either kick it over and the dogs eat it all yeah that's a good idea we should probably put a feed bunk out here okay we gotta check on his water Doesn't look like it froze too bad maybe fill it up more i think so This used to be where we worked our cattle before and with kind of a little catch pen right here, short little alley, and then we kept our chute right here. 
So when we were working the cows or we were preg checking or doing whatever, breeding, we built this about, I don't know, five or six years ago. And last summer we rebuilt all our corrals and everything on the south side of our barn here. So this all just got left over and it's gonna get torn out here eventually. We haven't gotten to it yet. So this is kind of our makeshift steer pin right now. That's why I've got these temporary red panels up. We've got some good high quality alfalfa that we're feeding the steer to try to grow him out and the horses don't need to eat that. So we've got, uh, we've got everybody separated out right now. So why do you hang your holes up? So it doesn't freeze and then you can't use it anymore. Yeah. But I got a backup pump. So how do you hang it up? Hang it up like that and then water runs out both sides? Yeah. Well, what's next on the chore list? Um, getting the horses off the hay. <laughs> No. No. Yeah, Tag's got it. He's all tangled up here. He can come help me. Okay. Where's he tangled up at? He's got his foot through this guy. Tag, you're okay. See? Feed the cats. All right, let's do it. Usually, after we come leave the ice cream, there more cats come. Yeah. Cause they're shy. They're really shy. Now she had that calico. And this calico had that one. So I wanted to talk to you guys quick this morning and show you our progress on on our preg checking status. Uh, what's probably been three, four weeks now. We put back patches on all of the cows that we have here at home as a kind of a cheater's way to seeing who's pregnant because this is going to tell me who's coming into heat. They won't go into heat if they're not. You know, if they're bred, if they're pregnant, they're not going to go into heat. So, unfortunately, because of the amount of snow and the blizzards and everything else we've had, I don't have really my chute, my alleys, and everything is just completely full of snow. So, I have not uh, been able to rebreed them or AI them again. But I kind of wanted to show you what some of these back patches look like. So, this is a back patch right here on this cow. And as you can see, there's a little bit of orange showing there, but that is just from tail row. That cow is gonna be bred. She, nobody has actually ridden her. Now, if I look at this cow over here, 
you can see how that tag is bright orange. Like there is not a single bit left on that. And the same thing with this cow over here. That is bright orange. So when it's bright orange like that, there is no doubt in my mind that another cow has ridden that animal uh, probably multiple times when she was in standing heat and she's open, she's, she's not bred. So I think out of all the cows that we had, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I guess, uh, only two of them are open. So that's not too bad. We AI'd all of these guys. I never put a bull in here at all. And so to only have two open is, is a pretty good deal. I think the, uh, that red Angus cow over there, or that, that red Angus Hereford cross cow over there, she's probably gonna go to town and help fill the freezer. And the rest of them, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna keep. Now, I know when they're gonna calve because I know since I AI'd them, I have those dates written down. So it's real easy for me to figure out when they're gonna calve, how far along they are. Same information that I would have available to me if I was going to palpate them uh, or use an ultrasound. So just a little cheat. Hope it works out for you guys. Like I say, it works out pretty slick. If you've got more than one cow, if you've got only one cow, one milk cow, one beef cow, something like that, that you're trying to breed, uh, and they don't have any other animals around with them, obviously that's not gonna work for you. But if you've got a couple of cows, this works beautifully.